Hey free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So a lot of you guys are stuck in various chapters of the story and primarily what I'm seeing is you guys are stuck at either chapter 1-8 or 12-8. It's usually these two and some of you guys are also stuck in chapter 10 and chapter 11. But I think for this video, I'm going to talk about chapter 12-8 because there are some valid strategies in handling Siegfried and I will discuss some of these strategies and show you what I'm doing to ensure that it is a bit easier for you to clear story content because we all know that clearing story content is where you get all your Go records from the start. So let's go right into it. Now, some of you guys might be running something like this, uh, two DPS and three supports and there's nothing wrong with this, there's nothing wrong with it. It should work, however, there are ways to improve this further, okay? So do take note that in the story, what's most important is actually clearing it, okay? It doesn't matter how fast you clear it, all that matters is that you do it. So with that said, one of the few changes that I would make is to reduce the number of DPS experts that you're bringing. You can even bring no DPS experts at all, but I think for this video, I'm gonna show you how bringing one DPS is sufficient. Now, there are a few DPS choices for you. So one is going to be Tang Yun. I think he is an excellent single target damage dealer and he's going to take down the boss very, very quickly. And another fantastic choice is Louis because Louis does a lot of random DPS all over the screen. However, if you only have one single enemy, he is perfect in isolating the target and hitting nine times on the enemy itself. And another really, really good pick is going to be Sender. I think Sender is probably a cheat code over here. So I'm not going to showcase Sender. He's a little bit unfair because of how powerful he can be. And of course, in terms of legendaries, if you do have Louis, he's going to be excellent here as well. He's going to wipe out the boss very, very quickly. But for this video, we are just going to take a look at one DPS and that's going to be Chloe. I think a lot of people know who Chloe is and know what she can do. But basically, she's also another random attacker, right? So her third skill and her second skill both hit random enemies. However, if there is only one single target, all of your attacks will be concentrated onto one single target. So it's pretty much the same as Louis. Now, there will be some changes that I will make here. So for example, in order for your team to sustain itself in the story, there are a few things that you can do, okay? So one DPS is good enough. Then what about the other four, right? So let's say if you need more healers, you can drop more healers in. If you need more debuffers, you can throw in more debuffers. Like let's say if you have a, a long mian, long mian is going to be quite useful over here because long mian has AOE freeze, AOE slows, and AP control. But I think for this video, I want to cover as much content as possible. And the expert that I'm going to bring in is actually another kind of support expert. He is going to be Jacob. And I'm going to show you how Jacob is very powerful against the Siegfried boss over here. Because do take note that the Siegfried boss does a lot of AoE attacks that lands poisons. So using Jacob is going to be very, very effective here because of his second skill, Intoxication. So grants thanks to all allied experts for two turns, during which time receiving damage has a 70% chance of inflicting poison on the attacker for one turn. But that's not all. So what Fangs does is you cannot be poisoned yourself and you may retaliate with the poison basically. So intoxication makes you immune to poisons, which is going to be very remarkable for this stage. And not only that, you're going to return the poison back to the attacker. Well, technically you're not returning the poison, you're just poisoning the attacker. However, I should address the reason why I'm not doing purgatory and instead I'm doing hard 12-8. It's simply because the experts over here are not very strong, okay? So for example, my Jacob is only at 5 stars with not a crazy set of relics, okay? He's doing okay. He's not, he's not out of the world. And my Changpu is also pretty much the same. She doesn't really have a whole ton of stats. A bunch of her runes are also like plus 12 and all that. And then we also have Heng Rhea, who I have recently unequipped with a lot of relics and she's, she's basically not even wearing anything right now. Hmm... Okay, but still, let's get right into the video. So if you do find that this video is going to be helpful for you, consider subscribing as subscribing is free and you can always change your mind and it really helps me out as well. Now, something that some of you guys might have also noticed is that I'm using Chloe as the leader instead of Heng Rhea. And Chloe's leader buff gives me 30% more accuracy, but Heng Rhea gives me, uh, I think, about 30% more HP or rather like 24% more HP. So the thing is, you can use whichever you prefer as long as it helps you out. So if you're lacking a little bit of HP and you're not sure where to get it from, you can always opt to switch your espers around and use an esper with a leader buff with HP or defense or even speed. Because the more speed you have, the more heals you can do the more damage you can land and the more controls you can do. I'm looking at you, Longmian. But I mean, Melanie does the same thing as well. So Melanie is also going to be a pretty decent choice here for controlling. But I think a defensive leader is not going to be as effective as a HP leader because the boss here lands AoE defense breaks. So just take note of that. So Chloe is going to take her turn very soon and I want you to see just how powerful she can be against Siegfried. Now you notice that Siegfried is alone over here and he's at 74% HP 
and now he's down to 14%. So that was 60% of his HP down in one shot. However, I have to address that yes, my Chloe is pretty well built at this point of time. And here you will see why Jacob is so powerful as well. Take a look at the AoE over here. No poisons on my team, but a bunch of poisons on his side. Okay, so back to Chloe. But the thing is, if you even have half of my stats, or if you do not even have any crit damage, you are still going to be able to drop him by about 30 to 40% in one go. Because I'm assuming that at this point, your team should be relatively stronger. So if you're not able to achieve some really decent crit damage and attack power, then what you can consider is to have a 100% critical rate. So just focus on your crit rate before you focus on your crit damage. And here, yet another AoE attack that gets returned with a ton of poisons. As you can see, now the boss is full of poison stacks. So that is the the power of Jacob in this sense and with Jacob you practically don't even need a DPS you don't even need Chloe here at all you can just run a team of complete supports and you'd be able to poison Siegfried until he's completely whittled down so Siegfried lost about 50% of his max HP just by taking a turn because of the poisons so I'm actually not advising you to use Chloe with Jacob I'm just showing you two different espers that work really well for this particular stage and that's exactly how you beat 12-8 I hope this video was informative if it was don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more dislike content and and leave a comment below if you have any other questions for me and I'll of course cover 1-8 and other different chapters that you guys have problems trying to complete. Now with that said, this has been free to play by the way and as always I will see you in the next video.